This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and another year, another iPad Mini. We're up to the iPad Mini 4 here. And happily, this time, unlike last generation, it's gotten a specs bump. So we finally have the Apple A8 CPU in here for some added performance, which was something that the, the Mini kind of really did need. Also running the new iOS 9.0 with split screen multitasking, a couple of other new features. Touch ID is back on the bottom. We're going to look at it now. So here we have the latest generation as of fall 2015 iPad mini. This is the iPad mini for eight inch display. Well, really 7.9 inches thinner than ever. <laughs> it's just amazing. Apple finds a way every time 6.1 millimeters thin. So still not quite as skinny as the Samsung Galaxy Tab S2, which is 5.9 millimeters, but well, it's skinny enough. It's also gotten lighter as well. It weighs 0 0.65 pounds, which is 10.5 ounces and 298 grams for those of you who speak metric, 18% thinner, a bit lighter. Now, Apple did reduce the size of the battery inside, but they managed to keep the battery life the same at 10 hours of use time. Now, I, while Apple might be a little overly optimistic about their claims for CPU performance improvement from generation to generation, they're pretty darn accurate and honest when it comes to battery life, so you can expect to really get 10 hours out of the Wi-Fi only model. This is available in Wi-Fi only, or you can get it with Wi-Fi plus cellular, which means 4G, LTE, 3G support also built in. All the carriers will offer it as usual. It's gonna be $130 more than the Wi-Fi only model. Same pricing, $399 gets you a 16 gig. Spend $100 more and you jump all the way to 64 gigs. Such a deal, that's actually pretty fair. And then if you wanna go up to 128 gigs, it's yet another $100. And you're looking at a very expensive little tablet at that point, considering it would be $599 for the 128 gig. And again, $130 more if you want the 4G LTE inside. Its biggest competitor may well be the iPad Air 2, which we have back here. Obviously, which one you pick it probably isn't so much about price. $100 separates these two. It's more about what size screen you want and how much tablet you want to carry around. They're both pretty thin. They're both, relatively speaking, light for what they are. It's just how much screen real estate you want. And nowadays, with the iPhone 6 Plus and 6S Plus being so popular, I suspect that a lot of people are looking at the bigger tablet again, but you never know. And in a way, this is sort of like the iPhone 6 Plus Plus, isn't it? At 7.9 inches versus 5.5 inches for Apple's larger phone. Inside, we do have performance improvements. We've gone from the A7 CPU that was in the iPad Mini 3 to the A8 CPU. That's the same CPU used in the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. Now, it's not the A8X used in the iPad Air 2, which is actually a three-core CPU. This is a dual-core, but still, it is clocked higher than the, the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus at 1.5 gigahertz, and it has the magical 2 gigs of RAM, finally. Performance is not going to beat the iPad Air 2, which is the fastest Apple tablet, but it's pretty darn respectful. You can see our 3D Mark iStorm Unlimited score here is 18,278. That is a market improvement, and... Honestly, it plays games quite well. We'll show you a little bit of uh, GTA in action a bit later so you can see that. This is running iOS 9 with a new style of multitasking right here. And we'll switch over to our Geekbench 3 score next. And you can see what that is for single and multi-core. Also a market improvement, but not as fast, of course, as the iPad Air 2. In practice, it feels quick and fluid And of course, you can do the multitasking. You do a swipe in from the side, and you can pick another app that you want to multitask with. And we'll just bring up Photos, which is where we had a screenshot of our benchmark. And if you drag around, you can continue on. You can pull this, and you can choose another application. So you've got that kind of functionality going on. Let's go back to Photos again for a minute. You see we have the little divider over here, so you can do a 50-50 split or whatever you like in the way of a split, and have both of those loaded and actually active at the same time. There have been a little bit of improvements to the cameras as well. You have still have the FaceTime 1.2 megapixel camera that can shoot 720p video. The rear is 8 megapixel. Again, pretty much like uh, the iPad Air and the iPhone 6, not the new 6S. It's going to have a higher resolution camera. They have supposedly improved the sensor, they claim, and also used somewhat faster lenses on the cameras too. 
You've got the usual photo, video, square modes, you've got time lapse, slow motion, all the usual features, panorama mode in Apple's typical kind of simple to use feature, and then you've got video right there. Obviously, you just swipe on over to video. It's a perfectly capable camera. We're not really videoing anything very interesting right there, but you can see nice big viewfinder. It looks pretty good. And let's see what that plays like. That looks pretty good, actually. So as tablets go, nice enough. Audio is courtesy of two speakers that are firing from the bottom. We have the lightning port down there nested in between for your charging and for your data transfer. Love and joy. Has Bluetooth 4.2 for Bluetooth peripherals. Keyboards are usually a popular one. Headsets, headphones, that sort of thing. And it has dual band Wi-Fi 802.11ac. If you get the LTE model, it'll support LTE 150 megabit per second. The lock slider is gone here, so no more is that. The usual chamfered shiny metal side over here. Up top is the power button and our headphone jack. And on this side is the volume. Now you can get this in your choice of space gray, which this is, or gold, or the old-fashioned silver. Your choice. Now with the Touch ID scanner embedded in the home button, you can use this to authorize purchases from the Apple App Store. You can also use it for other kinds of online purchases. It does not use NFC for point of sale kind of purchases because doing boom kind of against an MSC terminal with a, a tablet would be just kind of awkward, wouldn't it? So not free use at terminals in stores, but yes, you can use it when you're shopping online. No problem there. The display is the usual Retina display. 2048 by 1536 is a IPS display and it is now a laminated display. Reduces reflections, also allows them to make it a little bit thinner. Repairability, well, you know, this is an iPad. Not real easy to fix if something goes wrong. That's the story with an iPad. And honestly, a lot of tablets these days, the thinner they are, the harder they are to repair. Now, before we get into a little video playback and gaming, I just want to mention that the, the iPad Mini 3 is no more on Apple.com or be gone from Apple Store soon enough. But they will keep selling the Mini 2 for those of you who want to save some money. It still has the Retina display, has the older A7 CPU inside, and no Touch ID. So let's see how it looks for playing media. And now again, this is a 4x3 aspect ratio, so you're going to get the black bars when playing video. Also true of the new Samsung Galaxy Tab S2 line. Speakers are firing from the side over here. And we're using the YouTube app. This is Lisa for a Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at iOS 9, which is available for many iPad models and quite a few iPhone models from the Now, our video, our playback volume is at about two-thirds right now. It certainly looks good enough, and the speakers are decent. You know, they're not super loud. It is a smaller tablet. Not going to rock anybody's world too, too much, but good enough to hear what's going on. As ever with the iPad, a big part of the story is apps, not just the bundled apps. You can see here we've installed Apple's Pages, which is their word processor. You also have their Excel-compatible spreadsheet. You've got their PowerPoint presentation program. You've got GarageBand here. You have iMovie if you want. So pretty good ecosystem. And there are a lot of tablet-optimized apps available for the iOS ecosystem. That's one place where it does have a leg up over Android. So you can go to town with apps. In fact, if you're wondering why does anybody use a tablet camera, well, there's all sorts of interesting apps, like, for example, to, to film your golf swing so you can improve on it. Once for baseball, all that sort of thing. So really healthy app ecosystem there. Next, we're going to play GTA San Andreas. And we're going to have our Staff member played a game because the cat has pulverized my hand, as some of you know who follow my Twitter feed, so I am not playing two-handed games right now. All right, so we have our gaming editor standing in for me and playing, thanks to my lame hand. Now, GTA with the bicycle is harder than GTA with the car, but nonetheless, look, at the graphics rendering is very good here. These ports are actually pretty demanding, and it's looking very good, very smooth. Go ahead. Our gaming editor drives better than I do. Look at that. Well, anyway, the game looks pretty nice. And if you if you want to know about demanding titles, this is one of the more demanding games that you can play. Plays fantastic. Looks great. 
tall and all the iPad mini for is a compelling and if you have big hands like me a one-handed tablet which is not an easy feat these days even despite the four by three kind of wider aspect ratio like a lot of technology we've seen is just getting thinner faster lighter there's nothing earth shattering in the way of new technology here is just the the fastest smartest iPad mini yet and with a beautiful design a great ecosystem of accessories and applications on board you know it's hard not to say that it's a good tablet it is a good tablet folks so that's the Apple iPad mini 4 I, they don't bother putting retina any in there anymore because well these days are all retina even if you go back to the still on the market iPad mini 2 that was the one with retina display as well as you might guess from the name, yes, it has a very nice display. It still has that beautiful metal build quality, thinnest one yet, 6.1 millimeters, even lighter than ever. A very competent 8-inch tablet. If you're into the Apple ecosystem, well, you're not going to go wrong here if you prefer the smaller size. Its biggest competition is probably the 9.7-inch iPad Air 2. For those of you who are looking for a tablet, well, maybe even the iPad Pro, but I think that that's probably about three times as big as this guy. Anyway, there are certainly other tablets on the market, 8-inch tablets, some of them very nice Android tablets. This is not a SmackDown or comparison, but for those of you who are looking for a nice 8-inch tablet, and particularly you like Apple's ecosystem, it's hard to go wrong with the iPad Mini 4. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written review and subscribe to our YouTube channel.